This here is another viewer's broken gaming PC. And uh, this one's a bit of a handful. Apparently it used to work for a good while. You can see it's a cyber power PC pre-built. I'm not really a huge fan of this case. Airflow is pretty restrictive. It's a bit bare bones in here, but uh, it works. It works, right? It's a gaming PC and it's been doing the job for quite a while, but uh, the owner, she told me that all of a sudden she got this blue screen of death, what you're seeing here. And ever since then, when she attempts to power the system on, this blue screen pops up about right after the uh, bio splash page is where I'm expecting this shows up. And I have a pretty good idea of what this is. If you're pretty PC savvy, been doing this a while, I'm sure you do as well. But uh, of course we need to verify that this is in fact what's happening, that it is repeatable. And uh, we'll give her the typical rundown. Hopefully we can fix it in this video. Are you ready? Here we go, stay with me. Meet NZXT's new and improved H1. It's a compact ITX chassis packed full of features. You'll find toolless panels and SSD trays, a PCI 4.0 compatible riser cable, an integrated 750 watt SFX gold power supply, and a 140 millimeter all-in-one liquid cooler. It's practically half a PC build. Just throw in your platform and graphics card. NZXT's addressed cooling concerns with its previous model as well by opening this new version up a bit more, providing more airflow for larger graphics cards. Perforations around the case are also larger, and a 92 millimeter exhaust fan has been included for extra ventilation. If you're looking for something powerfully small and elegant, consider the new NZXT H1. Learn more by clicking the link below. Hey there, my name is Greg and this is the Fix or Flop playlist here. What we attempt to do is fix viewer systems in and around the Orlando, Florida area for free. We charge zero dollars and zero cents. So long as they're okay with us taking on their systems for a few days and filming these processes. I can make money on YouTube and elsewhere by monetizing these videos thanks to sponsors like the one you just saw that allow us to do what we do here uh, for free. as a free service to folks who live around me here in Florida. So if you have a broken system and uh, you don't wanna pay Geek Squad a hundred plus dollars, which, yeah, bit of a story here with this one I'll tell you about in a second, then uh, maybe reach out to me. If you're not local, we're not accepting shipments at this time, I'm sorry, you have to give it to me in person and you have to pick it up in person. That's the one big caveat. Now, about the Best Buy thing, I do wanna preface this by saying this is essentially hearsay. I'm just going off of the word of the owner. What she told me uh, her experience was like when she attempted to call Geek Squad and ask them to diagnose her system. She explained the blue screen of death to them and they said that they could look at it for $150. That was like the upfront fee. And then of course, if you know you have to order replacement parts or whatever, they were gonna tack that on as extra. She said they tried to sell her like some sort of additional warranty coverage. This, I mean, that's, that's how services like those make money. And uh, they might be right in certain circumstances, but most of the time, it, it's, it's just, in my opinion, not worth paying those prices. Uh, you would have to assume that your system would break you know, once or twice a year for it to really make sense financially. And then you'd still have to assume that the component that breaks is covered by the warranty or service period, which I'd be surprised if it was, especially if it ended up being the graphics card or something else very expensive. So needless to say, she ended up passing on that $150 repair service fee, whatever it was that they threw at her. Insane, I don't know how anyone expects a, a, a random person to walk in. And this was a system that she bought, mind you, at Best Buy. How do you expect a random person who's purchased a component at your store seven months prior to this, how do you expect them to pay $150 just to have you look at their system that's not working for whatever reason? That's insane. Like, she's already told you the symptom. She's already described it. It's a blue screen of death, right? And that particular blue screen of death, which I'll show you again here, looks to be pointing, obviously, toward the storage drive. So either we have a bad partition or the storage drive itself is going bad, I'm not sure. Uh, the fact of the matter is apparently this thing does boot up, it does post, so it gets that far, but when the boot volume is initialized, uh, that's when things go south. So we've got a bit of investigating to do here, but I, I do expect that we'll run into the uh, the issue, whatever's causing this problem, rather quickly. Now I'll be honest with you, I don't know too much about this build, apart from the obvious, right, the WD Blue that's in here. It looks like she got some crucial ballistics memory, uh, as well as a 1660 Super Ventus from MSI. Uh, the case, again, I'm not a fan of. The airflow is, is pretty, pretty blocked off. Um, Pretty much everywhere, except for the top, the very top and the very bottom. Does this thing even have a dust filter? No, no dust filter. <laughs> Maybe there's one at the bottom? Nope, <laughs> no dust filter. Okay, uh, so that's that's yeah, not good. It's gonna get very dirty very fast, I imagine. It already is kind of dirty, considering it's only about seven months or eight months old, apparently. But um, yeah, I mean, this being a pre-built, we might have to do a bit of cable management behind the motherboard tray. Things look pretty clean up front here, but uh, I always like to kind of do that nice little final touch. It's like my personal signature on builds, so we'll see if we can uh, tackle any of that after we fix the build, assuming we can fix it. So, yeah, 
We'll see. So with all that out of the way, let's get to the troubleshooting process. I am going to first attempt to power the system on and uh, replicate what the owner describes is happening. Uh, if we can get the blue screen of death to pop up rather readily, then uh, that'll pretty much narrow down what we should focus on from a hardware perspective. We've got our portable monitor hooked up and the system has been plugged into power at the wall. The switch at the rear is on and here we go. Oh, nice pink, pink lighting scheme. I dig it. So I'm expecting a post. From what I was told, we should get a post. And then after it posts, when it tries to initialize from the drive, we get the blue screen. If we get the blue screen before that, that uh, could be a slightly different issue. Okay, yes, all right, so that's a post, that's good. We're using an Azeroc board here. Uh, this preparing automatic repair is probably just a result of her cycling it over and over, just cutting power. So I'm just gonna let it run through and uh, attempt to boot into Windows. And that again is when I expect to see the BSOD. So we'll, uh, we'll cross our fingers. I guess we don't really wanna cross our fingers if it's something bad, but uh, I'm just hoping that it's what she describes because if it's something else that could be a nightmare to try to troubleshoot. So I've got my keyboard plugged in. I just noticed here, it says that it can't repair the PC, which is interesting. It shows us a log file here. It looks like it uh, was able to access the drive, but I'm wondering if the reason why it failed to repair is because it, it really just can't do much with this drive without it falling apart. So. We'll click advanced options and we'll try to enter the recovery environment. Well, it uh, didn't like that, it kicked me into the BIOS. I just realized this is an AMD platform. I thought this entire time was an Intel rig, but uh, it's got a Ryzen 7 3700X in it. Eight core, 16 threads, Zen 2, way to go. Pretty sweet chip. I'm gonna go over to the boot tab here. Let's see, boot option one, Windows boot manager. I mean, this is correct. And this is the WD blue drive. Looks like a 500 gig, so. Let's see if we can boot into it. Again, I, well, we'll just do boot override just to be sure. So I'm gonna click this and uh, let's see what happens. So again, at this point, it is trying to get into Windows. It is accessing the drive currently and trying to load that boot partition. Uh, it should be fairly quick because this is an NVMe, but uh, it's, it's taking, a, taking a good while. It's kind of strange. Uh, any second now? It definitely shouldn't be this wrong. Ooh, and there it is, inaccessible boot device. Exactly the same as she described. Yeah, and I'm gonna go ahead and kill power. Let's see if I can turn off at the front. Oop, not working. All right, so powered off, it's just gonna keep boot cycling because it, it, can't, it can't get into the operating system. Um, I could approach this one of two ways. So I asked her ahead of time, again, because I, I had a good feeling that this is what it was. I asked her if she had anything sensitive on the drive because what I want to attempt to do is, I wanna to attempt to, to still keep the drive. I, I, it just might be a, a, a bad partition, a partition that the system just can't boot into, maybe it's corrupt for some reason, who knows what's on this thing. But um, in order to do that, I'll need to reformat and that means losing data. She just has some games on here, she said some pictures, but it's all backed up, not, not a big deal. So. I think before we swap the drive outright, because I do, I do think that's gonna work, um, I want to try reinstalling Windows. I'm gonna see if I can select uh, and delete the existing partitions in here in the Windows boot media creation tool thing. And then after that, uh, we'll try to, to reboot into Windows uh, once it's been installed and see if that fixes it. If it does, then this was potentially just a software issue, but it was one that was severe enough to prevent us from getting into the system. That reminds me, what we could try is booting into safe mode. That, that actually, I wanna do that before we start deleting stuff. Let's try it. A few moments later. Right, uh, I'm an idiot. I just realized I, I just tried to boot into the recovery environment and it wouldn't work. And I think it's just because, it, I mean, it has to access it through the drive. It's in the Windows operating system that you flash to the drive. And uh, so if it can't access it, how do you get into the recovery environment? I mean, that, that's common sense. I don't know why I thought I could. So uh, I think we're going to have to try to reinstall Windows. And uh, assuming that doesn't work, which I don't think at this point it's gonna, we'll have to replace the drive, which honestly should be a pretty straightforward fix. We'll reinstall Windows, get it going for her again, and uh, the rest of the system should be all right. By the way, a few things to point out while we're doing this. First off, because we can get into the BIOS, I mean, that is a pretty good sign that the other components here 
are functioning properly, which is again, is why I'm focusing so much of my effort on the storage drive. Uh, the other obvious cue is of course the blue screen of death. Uh, if you are curious about what I'm about to do here by attempting to install Windows, we have a dedicated video on this topic. You can check it out. I'll have it linked in the video description. So we are now in the media creation tool. We'll click next and install now. What I'm really curious about is whether or not it'll let us delete the current partitions on this drive. Again, this looks like the only drive in the system. Uh, actually, now that I look at it, there is a SATA cable. Hold on, hold on, hold on a second. There's a SATA cable on this uh, on this computer. That's weird. Maybe there's a hard drive in here, but th surely there's no operating system. That can't be what this thing is trying to boot into. Oh my gosh, there is a hard drive in here and uh, it is not sitting properly. This, this is how you kill a hard drive, folks. There are moving platters in here and uh, when you don't secure it, then it just rocks around. It can knock those platters loose. It can knock the, the arm assembly that reads the platters loose. That is, um, this is not good. It does, it does feel like it's on. It is working, but uh, I mean, working in the sense that it's turning, but uh, we'll see. I, we still need to figure out if the OS is on this or the WD NVMe. I think it's on the NVMe because I saw it was a 500 gig drive uh, in the BIOS, and this appears to be a one terabyte hard disk drive. And an easy way to confirm that is to check the partitions that already exist here. So uh, we've got, let's see, drive one. So I think, e, ooh, system. Yeah, okay, new volume. So drive zero is the hard disk drive. Okay, so this seems fine. It's just a new volume. I'm assuming for games is what she was talking about. Uh, drive one only has a half a terabyte capacity. You can see Windows right here on the 465.2 gig partition. So when we delete, the OS, uh, all we need to touch here is this drive number one. Again, drive zero probably has games on it, so uh, there, there's really no reason to, to touch this, because again, this shouldn't be the reason why this system isn't booting or why we get that blue screen of death that, uh, that mentions in an accessible boot device. I'm just assuming that's the case. Of course, if this doesn't work and we do swap the NVMe out and it still gives us that blue screen, then it's probably a corrupt hard drive, probably a, a broken hard drive at that point because we saw how sketchy it was mounted in the case. In fact, it wasn't even mounted at all. It's just kind of sitting in that cage. So uh, we'll go ahead and start deleting these partitions. I've already double checked that this is okay with the owner. We're gonna delete that and we're gonna delete this and one more. Okay, so now we have a full half a terabyte on this NVMe of unallocated space and we're gonna create a new volume here for booting. Now it installed Windows super fast. What I'm curious about is if this works. See, if we had just swapped the drive out, we wouldn't really have a way of figuring out if the drive's actually good or not, or if it is something just in software that was creating the inaccessible BSOD we saw. So we'll find out. At this point though, I will say I'm a bit surprised. Uh, seems to be working well. This is very peculiar. We're just running through the setup prompts now and it seems to be, seems to be working just fine. I, I think by this point, we would have definitely seen a blue screen of death. And uh, I mean, you guys saw how quickly, I mean, we, we couldn't even get into Windows before it gave us the BSOD. So I'm, I'm assuming it's, it's functioning fine now. Uh, I, I don't have time for it to sit for days in the office just to see if that BSOD pops back up. But, uh, you know, it could have just been a very like pertinent Windows file that was deleted. It couldn't be found, and that was why it couldn't boot into the volume. That, that, it could be that simple, and as long as you have important files backed up, reinstalling Windows would be a quick fix. It'll give you a fresh OS, so it should run a lot faster as well. So, um, everything works. Seems fine. I've let it sit for about 10 or 15 minutes. No blue screens, even downloaded a program. Uh, checked the, uh, just the, the health of the drive, according to Crystal Disk Info, and everything seems good. Actually, both drives, not just the 500 gig NVMe, but also the one terabyte hard disk drive. Not sure how much longer um, it's gonna be alive, but uh, we'll definitely fix that up. We'll get it situated and mounted properly so that in the event it is shipped and kind of knocked around, it doesn't actually break itself. I'm surprised it didn't break, honestly, with me driving it here and to the office. That's 
that's just really sketchy the way that thing's in there. But since I'm already in the Windows Update mood, I did it once, might as well do it a second time for a drive that is much faster, PCI 4 compatible, and double the capacity thanks to the P5 Plus here from Crucial. Now, unfortunately, the motherboard in here is only a B450 board, despite the CPU having PCI 4 point of support. The motherboard obviously does not, unless there's some crazy BIOS update that I wasn't aware of. And even then, apparently the tracers, or the traces, excuse me, aren't there for uh, Gen 4 bandwidth. Uh, so uh, we won't be able to utilize the full speed of this thing. Uh, however, it is still double the capacity. I think there's no better time than now to swap drives because we ran into this the corrupt operating system on the drive to begin with. So I'm gonna go ahead and swap that one out for this one and we'll get Windows installed on here. Now, there's one thing I really like about NVMe's apart from how blazing fast they are in most builds, and that's that they are super easy to install and in this case, uninstall. The Crucial P5 Plus is a low profile NVMe just like the WD that we're swapping it out with. Uh, and uh, so it should be pretty straightforward to install. If we had a motherboard that had a very beefy like heat sink or something to put on top of this, that also wouldn't be an issue. I also like from an aesthetic standpoint that uh, this NVMe has a darker PCB and a darker sticker. So it doesn't stick out like a sore thumb like our previous drive. Now, before we get carried away, I do want to address this uh, crooked hard disk drive here. It actually looks like the cage is kind of bent and that's why this thing is sitting like this. It's going to be, oh gosh, it's going to be awkward to get out of here. I wonder if it came like this from the factory or if this happened while the owner was in possession of it. I, I can't even, I can't even get this out. Oh, there is, there's a Phillips screw holding this in. That's why it wasn't moving. Okay, there's just one, is that it? There's just one Phillips screw holding this entire thing up. Wow. Like we said though, the drives seem fine in software. I don't see any issues with it. Uh, just externally, it's not beat up or anything. There aren't any dents. So uh, hopefully this thing has a lot of life left to give, but uh, I wouldn't be surprised if it died Somewhat soon. Again, being transported, especially sitting like that, if it gets rocked around a lot, just uh, yeah, no bueno for these. I'm trying to bend this back a bit so that we don't have this issue in the future. Just using your case as a point of leverage. And it does look a bit straighter now. So let's try sliding this back in. Okay, there we go. Yeah, it was just a bit of a tolerance issue probably when I, when I flexed it. So um, yeah, that looks a lot better. It's sitting much better in there. And uh, we'll put one here in the bottom. This is the empty one. There we go. Last thing we'll do then is reinstall Windows again on the new Crucial P5 Plus. It's gonna be faster, double the storage, so it uh, should be pretty sweet. This here is it, drive one. You can see about one terabyte worth of space. We'll click next and let it work its magic. I'm not gonna run through any of these prompts here. I want her to be able to set up her network, name the PC, etc., all on her own. So when she turns the PC on for the first time, it'll pop up to the screen like a fresh new PC. I'm sure a few of you are wondering still why I bothered swapping the drives out. I mean, yes, it's an upgrade. That was part of why I wanted to do it. Uh, and I am grateful for Crucial being the product sponsor of this video. Uh, but I'm still, I'm still kind of on edge about this drive. I'm not entirely sure if it is healthy or not. Um, it could have just been a fluke, the fact that it was working fine for about 15 minutes or so, but I don't want this to be a recurring issue. And just to be on the safe side, swapping it out, we'll kind of rid of that, uh, that potential issue down the line. Um, so we'll see, I'll run some tests with it and I'll let you guys know, maybe in a pinned comment later on, uh, what we found with this one. But uh, I mean, all preliminary checks seem to suggest that this is fine. Who knows? We'll see. But uh, for now, uh, more storage for the primary boot drive and uh, a system that otherwise works now. It's a bit loud, we can tweak the fan curves, but uh, other than that, it is A-OK. -okay. Let's get this stuff cleaned up now. Wow, see, that wasn't so bad, right? Some of these are, are fairly approachable. And um, you know, all it took was just reinstalling Windows on that old drive. Again, I'm gonna be running some more checks on that WD Blue drive long-term just to see if it holds up. But uh, nonetheless, we do have a, a fresh brand new drive in here. Again, double the capacity, also Gen 4 capable for when the uh, platform is upgraded, you can move it to another system that's Gen 4 compatible and extract the full potential out of the P5 Plus. But uh, everything else works, it's great. And uh, hopefully she'll be happy. I'm actually, I've been texting her now, getting things set up to drop the system back off and uh, she's excited, so that's great. That's the whole point of the series, to make an impact, not to charge anything and to avoid people getting ripped off by places like Geek Squad. I'm honestly a bit surprised that it didn't end up being something uh, more difficult. I'm very weary when it comes to working on software related issues and I wasn't sure if this was gonna be one or not, but it looks like just a uh, very, again, very basic uh, operating system error. In fact, if you Google that blue screen of death prompt, a lot of the websites that talk about what those codes mean uh, will tell you that the drive is probably dead. So if all we had done was just swap the drive out, I mean, that, that would have fixed the issue but we really would have ended up spending more, right, to replace the drive. If I was charging this customer, I would have ended up charging her for a brand new NVMe. 
and uh, it, it would have proved to be unwarranted because the original drive, as far as I'm aware, is fine. Uh, all we had to do was reinstall Windows. Again, I tried doing other things, entering safe mode, the recovery environment, wouldn't happen. Just It just didn't like it at all. So I'm not sure what went wrong. Again, I'm not sure what the, uh, what the system's been through, but uh, I can say for certain now that it appears to be functioning just fine. So with that, if you guys enjoyed watching this one play out, be sure to let me know, I give this one a thumbs up. That would be greatly appreciated. If you're not subscribed for whatever reason, get subscribed. Fix your flock playlist is pretty hot here. And uh, we upload these episodes all the time, like literally all the time. We have so many folks in the area that have issues. Um, it's kind of a, a bad thing in one sense, but it, it's great for coverage, great for videos. And uh, hopefully you all are, are, are able to learn a thing or two from these as well. Um, I imagine that not every, you know, diagnosis or correction is going to be like, the, you know, wow, a revelation, right? But uh, like this one, you know, it wasn't all that complicated to fix in the grand scheme of things, uh, but you just never know. So if you run into that same kind of issue, maybe before just riding off the drive, try giving another shot, breathe new life into it by starting fresh uh, with Windows and uh, go from there. Uh, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you'd like to see next. Again, we don't just do Fix and Fall up here. We do a few other things as well. We have a few successful playlists that we're trying to keep going. And uh, if you have a broken system or a dirty system and you want to have it uh, looked at here on the channel and you live in and around Orlando, Florida, be sure to submit a form. The link is in this video's description. All right, I'm going to get out of here. My name is Greg. Thanks for fixing this one with me.